I've been seeing a lot of 4 Damn AC. Damn it! <laughs> <Radiance> <laughs> No. I've been seeing a lot of 4 AC on Ra Radiant and a lot of Navi on Dire. Do you think that both of these teams prefer these sides? And if so, for what reason? All right, we didn't even talk about on Dire. Yeah, team I don't know why we completely ignored that hero. Uh, that's the problem with this new patch, man. That's Sometimes the just, you know. Really? It was one or the other. I think Navi would have picked on Dying if they banned Jyra. So, all right, we got two out of four. That's okay. Is that okay? That's 50%. That's usually... Well, we also got a Jyra pick, <laughs> so that also... I would say that's a very important opening for Navi here, though. Getting a gyrocopter for her host. Uh, as far as the you asked about the sides, right, Ben? Mm -hmm. um, how successful have Navi been with controlling Roche in this tournament? Do you feel like have they Ten picked Dire or has pick. it just been chance? I don't know. I think they've been on Dire more PM. than Radiant. If I Radiant could, I don't know what the stats are on that. But I also seen 40 AC on Radiant a lot. So I, I don't know, like if it's if it just so happens that way, or maybe they lose a coin toss a lot. But it seems like one of these sides has preference for Radiant Dire. Usually, both teams want the same side, right? But yeah, but Navi don't really seem to draft lineups that are really good at doing Roche. They right. haven't focused a lot on the minus armor or medallion pickups mm -hmm. or whatnot. So. I don't know, maybe they just... Ten seconds to what are the advantages right now? Like, what's the consensus of what's strong? I still feel like the Radiant offlane is stronger. Yeah. Uh, even after the hurry. multiple buffs to the Dire offlane, I still feel Fun like Radiant has an advantage there. In the mid lane, Radiant may be slightly favored Dirty with their high ground pick. there. Depend Access to Ancients. That's... I mean, that's kind of questionable because Navi, they use the Winter Wyvern, and you can only do that on the, on the, the if you're on Dire. Because they flew him over from the Ancient Cliff, and they just ganked mid. Yeah. And it, I, I think they actually... You know, they they really like that part of it being on dire. It's true. You can't you can't do it on the other side. It's very yeah. hard to execute. Mm -hmm. it so it, it it looks strong, but only they just absolutely dominated Shadow Fiend. So I think they actually want them to pick Shadow Fiend on Radiant. But do you think they're picking Dire for Wyvern? Five no, seconds. No, 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 no. Right. I think they're okay <laughs> with giving up Radiant for first pick because they're really comfortable on Dire. I'd say uh, Dire is a bit better for the the jungle part. You have Dyer's jungle bad. opportunities as well as stacking opportunities for supports, which are a bit better to me on on Dire if you're not focused yeah. on the mid lane like. Of course, for a Shadow Fiend in the mid lane, it's, it's nice to be Radiant. They can stack at the same time, form that mid lane a bit more safely. That's Radiant's why bad. I would choose the Radiant side as well. You were mentioning off lane as well as mid lane. I think Radiant, in terms of just this lane setups, is stronger. But on Dire, you have bro uh, the, the Ancient spot, is a, I would say, it's a bit better on Dire as well as the jungle. Yeah, it's easier for them to counter ward the safe lane pole. With sentries too on dire, you can. Uh, there's, seconds, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's, there's, there's perfect sentry ward placement. Like there's no way with two sentries you don't counter ward everything. There Reserve also time. isn't on radiant. I think if you place it perfectly, but there's a really high chance you have to use both. Whereas on dire, there's a really high chance you only need one. Mm -hmm. I've seen people use like three on dire, or three on radiant, uh, trying to block the radiant pool and almost not get it. So you might have to use more than two. All right. Well, all, I guess Dimes all in all. Man. We prioritize Radiant a bit, at least I would, based on this. That's Very a, that sounds a bit better for me. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Radiant's bad. Four anchors are gotta love Radiant. Every Tusk time they run band. this, they, uh, they roll with this every time on the Radiant side, this Cuddle PL. I mean, are we gonna be seeing their usual pickup? Trixie going with the Weaver to the off lane, and I believe outside of that, they would pick up something like a Rubik. But I really like what Navi have done. Only They're not seconds. gonna kind of stall around a bit. They just go right for the Night Stalker. Uh, Obviously, five a nice seconds, little rivalry between seconds. them and the cloud. Hurry, when I actually see those two here, Starcopter as well as Night Stalker, you mentioned the time. Weaver. To me, Weaver is not that great mm -hmm. because of the silence. Yeah. I think that the silence is actually quite quite good against the Weaver. Other than that, Zeus to me is a very strong pick against the Phantom Lancer, as well as it works very well together with the Night Radiant Stalker. Team are now it picking. hasn't been picked up at all in this qualifier. Maybe, Maybe okay. once. Maybe once? Yeah. But I, yeah, I, still, I still think it's a very strong hero. Oh yeah, Alliance picked it yesterday after they were knocked out. But that was just a, you know, that, that game was barely a game. They were just screwing around. But I think that might have been one serious Zeus pick, because that was not the first pick of Zeus in qualifiers in general, but it could be the first Nero. So. Because it didn't get that many nerfs at all. It just got no. a vision nerf on the Ten ultimate. Ten seconds to yeah. pick. I, I think that was it. Yeah, that I was remember it. talking with Envy about it. He just kept talking about how Five the seconds. play style hurry, has shifted hurry. a lot, and as well as Glimmer Cape. Glimmer Cape. So he's at both of those combined nerf the hero a lot. Yeah, Glimmer Cape is kind of a problem. That's true. All right, so we'll have to see if the grab of the Night Soccer is indeed going to change things up. Has 4 you see used the Tusk a lot? No, I was wondering that too. I don't remember seeing it. This could be some scrim information from pre-qualifiers or something, maybe. 
Uh, Dyer's turn to make all the changes. Like that'll that'll be the third pick. More illusions, the better, I suppose. But also good at being able to zone out whatever the potential offlaner could be for the side of Navi. I would say it's it's also a very good like steal. I think Navi ran that hero quite often, having a Shadow Demon, and it's pretty good against the Phantom Lancer. Yeah. So I would, yeah, I think it's it's good as well as it counters well. Yeah, there are there are multiple really good points about picking oh, the Shadow Demon. I actually think the the synergy with Caudal is pretty good. It makes it very easy to line an Illuminate in the laning phase if you're on a tri lane. It opens up for aggressive uh, tri lane as well. In addition to that, it's a way of keeping Phantom Lancer safe. W if Doppelganger is down or if he gets silenced by Night Stalker, you can delay for those two and a half seconds and probably get him out afterwards. And also pretty solid against a Gyrocopter. I don't know if he's going to run for the homing missile build or not, but regardless, then you can also avoid... If you time it perfectly, I think you can actually avoid both impacts of the call down. I think there's two seconds between the Only two. Only ten seconds. If you do it very well, you could really shut him down. Now, this is a good third pick, though. Five seconds That's remain. a problem for four anchors. Yeah, food mother. They I have no I counter. I think they can aggro, though, with Coddle, Peel, Shadow time. Demon. Yes. Coddle, Shadow Demon was one of the two most popular supports in tri -lanes not too long ago. It's a good axe game. I think they're going to grab that now. And they do go for it. Yeah. Trixie does like to play the axe, so yeah, they could try to see if they can match up the axe and Broodmother 101 and indeed go with the aggro. I would say it's very risky, though. Going into Night Stalker, says he has a lot of stats, he has a slow, and Gyrocopter axe. in a short lane is always good. But what if you just That's put PL mid? Pick. We were talking about that yesterday, honey, that you think PL matches up very well mid against most heroes. You just land spam the hero and you last hit with a Quelling Blade or just real regular attack damage, which is pretty high, and you just Bottle Crow. I was, I was about to mention that. <laughs> okay, sorry, I stole your thunder, but, <laughs> but what if they do that? I, I mean, I think it's good, but mm, it's, I don't it's still a it. tough decision to make. Oh, okay. Radio it's that band. kind of game. I don't think it's that risky for them to aggro, though. The reason Shadow Demon... It w this was also the patch when Gyrocopter was really popular, so whenever they go on a hero, they just defensively disrupt, and then the illusions tank the majority of the Rocket Barrage. So Rocket Barrage is actually very useless in that try-on-try, -try, when generally it's a really big dominant force. I just don't... F I feel like this isn't going to be a try-on-try -try anymore. Yeah, I think our style is going to play in the Radiant hurry, Jungle, and they're going to crush the Axe mm -hmm. with Brood Enchantress. They're going to force support rotation, and then the question is if 4 sees whatever dual in that case the they will have remaining in the top they can be Gyrocopter. They can just do Auto PL top and SD and X bottom though. I don't. I also don't think that's that bad of an option. Or PL mid as you guys talked about. Do you think SD and X can manage against the new Enchantress plus Brood? I Ench gets so. two or three creeps and they just dive the tower. What? What do you do? Disrupt the X and then his illusions spin and kill most of the Dyer's other bad. units. You just don't hit X. You go for and kill SD. Oh yeah. Radiant you just have SD just sit behind and wait wait for them to go on X. I I, th I think it's playable. Okay. I would say Enchantress still has to watch out a lot. If you get a disrupt yeah. onto the Enchantress and you follow up with a call, and if you're lucky, if you're a bit lucky with the spins, mm -hmm. you need like one two spins, and Ench is still dead. Yeah, she is very fragile. That's true. What's her base armor? It's pretty low, right? It's, it's like one or something. It's, so pretty pretty low. it's quite low as well as strength against very low. It's probably yeah, Ooh, it's the lowest in the game. I think. I think she has one. You can call her from like half HP. You just <laughs> five you just have a lot of movement speed on, on that hero. Yeah. Last pick coming out for four anchors were Reserve unless they're gonna, they are going to decide to do PL for whatever reason in the mid lane. This should be their mid lane grab. Anything standing out? Shadow Fiend is still there if they want to fall back for it. But outside Shadow of that, anything Fiend. popping out? Okay, Shadow Fiend. Dire team are now picking. There it is. Now the good news with picking Shadow Fiend here is that if the Enchantress doesn't run aggressively into the enemy jungle or for whatever reason they can manage to oh zone her out. Oh my! Maybe they're just. Taking a little bit of that yellow submarine flavor here into <laughs> their uh, first matchup. But that is probably the scariest matchup for Shadow Fiend. One hook, even if you're behind, it, it is a kill. And it is, it is a Dendi punch here. <laughs> When's yeah. the last time we've seen Dendi on punch? People have been calling out for it for so long. It's... I feel like Pudge in the mid lane is better on Radiant than Dire, though. Like, the angles that you have and the general vision and the way you ward... I feel like when you're playing Radiant, you have like the way the cliff is shaped that you go to the right and then you can hook across. That play is a lot easier on Radiant than Dire. Do you know what I mean? Like if you look yep. at the mid lane, like how it's built. Yes. I think Shadow Fiend in this is fairly safe. And if he feels intimidated, he could just go and farm the small camp as well. He just raises out, raises that. And I don't know. To, to me, Pudge Ten mid is kind of a thing of the past because this hero does not scale well with farm, in my opinion, unless Five you get seconds. really far. Hurry, it's more hurry. about getting levels. And he could. You're right, it's risky for the Shadow Fiend. To me, it comes down to Enchantress entirely. This whole game is on art style. 
I was going to say, what if Enchantress is going to be in the opponent jungle like we were expecting, and then she have to someone to help you out on the Shadow Fiend? That could provide a little bit of extra vision dying. and kind of keep the Shadow Save Fiend it. moving all over the place. And if you can effectively zone the Shadow Fiend to one side with, you know, maybe she gets fortunate and gets like a Harpy or something like that, then it could fall right into the hook of yeah. someone like this Pudge. I don't That's think true. If they get a Harpy, Shadow Fiend actually loses this lane horribly. That's true. I mean, Denny uses a lot of smokes even if he's behind. He uses like, you know, three smokes at level seven and gets a lot of kills. So I, I don't think it's that big of a deal if Shadow Fiend gets that much free farm in mid. I think. Producer's letting us know that Enchantress's uh, starting armor is actually 0 0.66. Thank you. So it's a That's zero. pretty low. If you've rounded, I guess. Generally to say, though, I, it's a scary factor. You have an SF against a Putch, and if the Putch gets into your head, that's very scary. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Dendi. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you, you can't, you, you, you can't take that out of, out of this situation at all. Yeah, the mental aspect is really important whenever you're playing against Pudge. That he's one of those heroes that just changes the game with you can't trust your usual movement patterns and the way you read the map with the vision you have. So that is definitely true. However, one weakness against uh, of Pudge in this game compared to a lot of other games, Pudge is generally a pretty good anti-carry where you hook the carry and kill him. He can't kill PL. Doppelganger is fast enough to get away every single time you get hooked. So death, death, now death, we will have death, to find death, another death, way of locking death, down the PL. Death. And honestly, looking at the heroes, they don't really have anything. They do not. I mean, Gyrocopter is a decent answer against the PL. Damage-wise, yes. Yeah, and in the mid-late game. But the way Navi is structuring the kind of draft, you have a Broodmother is going to pressure early. You have an Enchantress that's supposed to be pressure. Then you have a Night Stalker. First Night is going to be very important here on the side of Navi. As you know, and, and the roaming duo of Inch, Night Stalker during the first night, how much can they get done? If if the Shadow Fiend gets early portraits, I think it's going to be a lot harder for the Pudge, but it really comes down to that, how effective those ganks are going to be. Looks like Artsile was planning on heading into the Four Anchors territory to try to do a bit of that aggressive jungling that we were expecting, but look who's already there to welcome her. Boogie's already on the scene. So with that, Merlini, Hani, it was a pleasure having you on the panel. We'll be seeing you at probably the conclusion of the series. Actually, it's playoff time, if you'd like. We would be happy to have you after each game so we can go through the rest of the draft and we can talk a bit about each game as they do go. So with that said, it'll leave me over with me, myself, and Cinderin. Pleasure to be by your side once again, my man. Yeah, this is the first time we cast together just as a duo. Our first cast ever was like a week and a half ago at the summit, where mm -hmm. we had a little bit of a a couch cast with me, you, and I believe Suns fan. That's it correct. was so. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this, man. It's, it's looking to be a really good game as well as Enchantress art style is already in trouble. They had plenty of time to think about this one. They lay out an early disruption. Look at the damage already come out. They can get one more. How oh, goosh! They don't get still dead. The blast, but there it is. There's going to be the attack. Ooh. Four anchors going to be leading in with the first blood. How effective is that going to be on the game? Is that? I wouldn't say it's going to be devastating for for Navi whatsoever. But now Arcel has to do that long trip back. Does he now decide to second guess going to the other you know side of the globe, stick with his own jungle at this point? I think this is huge because this was the whole momentum-based idea that Navi had from level one was that the Enchantress was going to go down and put a lot of pressure. It has now forced Navi to change their plan. They're TPing Night Stalkers at top. Enchantress has to play her own jungle. However. This also means that Brood gets a better matchup. They've swapped around, so Brood is bottom and close to stop on the gyrocopter against Axe. This Axe is going to struggle a lot. And now it's going to be the whole like cat and mouse lane game where you, you keep swapping around and try to catch the enemy team off guard by getting the advantage on, on having the better heroes in the right place at the right time. But for now, I would call this a big deal for Foya C. Enchantress is so momentum based. She really is, but look, Boogie trying to be there to slow that roll quite a bit. He is already leeching some of that XP, hanging out nearby. I'm very curious how the bottom lane, though, overall is going to be painting out. Yeah, you don't have to worry too much about that Enchantress being that, that threat on the side, but in this lane, Coddle, does he really offer a whole lot? Just maybe puts down some sentries to help out a bit. And as that happens, though, there's going to be the, the rock throw. Boogie now going to get bullied away from the Navi side, but yeah, you know, it's, it's just like play a couple of wards, but you really can't do much else. You don't want to be blasting the lane, then you're taking farm away from PL. I feel like this Broodmother is going to be able to get plenty of XP and just start to get that level 3 in Soul Ring pretty damn fast. And she is going to beat this lane ultimately. I think when Brutus level 5, PL is going to struggle a hell of a lot down here. I mean, you can keep giving him mana with Coddle, but you can't keep giving him health. Uh oh, uh oh, so there that. we go. Trixie might be in trouble. That early stun the Shockwave. Not going to be doing a whole lot. But he's able to walk on out. There's going to be the disruption regardless, as Boogie does interject. But 
No blood going to be shed from either side. Just a, a bit of a threat, but you can see it's more space for Havos to kind of do as he pleases here. Trixie is going to continue to have to kind of wait on back. And I'm looking to see if Artstyle has any plan with this first smoke. His Mud Golem is going to split in a moment, the first one, and then he has a minute with two of those Pro Boulder abilities on it. It's going to come up right now. Uh, so now he actually has three boulders, and he's going to smoke, but... Wait, is this just a, an observer bug? It has to be. Dyer's right? bottom tower uh, under it's fire. right on the creeps, but... Oh, well, oh. Now, now his smoke broke anyway. It yeah. looked like only his hero was smoked to me. I don't know. That, that must be just a spectator bug. Yeah, at least from our point of view. Oh, Funnick! Like What's happening here? Funnick gonna get caught out and taken down with the spirit lance. He has us. been constantly pressured back a bit. That was not what I was expecting to go down in this lane. Oh, interesting stuff. And Dial's you see Dendi actually almost already attacked. level 5, so that hook getting leveled up now. He's gonna have the range to work with. He's gonna put the third point into it here. I don't even know Dial's if he's gone for an attempt yet. He has lost fire. quite a bit of mana, so I'm sure he's had a couple of swings, but they seem to have been all misses up to this point. Oh, and Funnick is going to port back to the bottom lane after, of course, getting killed off, and he's going to be greeted by a Lance and an Illuminate right away down to that point. Oh, oh Trixie. Yeah, they get the pull back. They get the catch on the Shadow Fiend here. The Rot's on out, and they're going to get the kill. Trixie was there to help out, but you can say the same for the other side. So Nico is there to welcome him, and right into the nighttime, it's going to be Navi picking up their first kill. Yeah, nice rotation there for the top rune. Of course, Night Stalker with that timing window, catching level three. He got a haste anyway, so I guess it didn't matter all that much. But Artstyle making use of the Mud Golem. He's going to finally get level two. So, see, this is what happens. If your first rotation into the enemy jungle does not work and you get counter jungled afterwards, he is pretty much behind par. So it was very important for them to get that one kill and get him a little bit on the board. Dendi being involved got him almost level six. So now we're going to see what Hani was talking about. The solo kill potential for Shadow Fiend. Very easy when you hit level six and get the dismember up. And Dendi will buy, be buying boots now as well. So, that would be speed advantage. Comes in from the north, lays out the early disruption. They followed up with one raise. They get some poison damage there, but it's not going to be enough to nearly bring down Dendi. Here comes Sonico and company using that knight. They're going to consider charging on forward, but no. Just a little too far and away. Hook, it's going to be coming up short. Maybe if it was level four, it could have been relatively close, but it will be a swing and a miss nonetheless. So, good rotations to Dial's mid lane, but you know, Navi have to commit to something where they get nothing out of it. Yeah, how is uh, how is Trixie doing? So he he didn't die in the gank top when uh, Shadow Demon protected him. He's now level four minute five and a half, and Brutus level five and a half. So there's a level advantage for Funic now that the lanes have been uh, shuffled up a little bit. And I still think Trixie will be fine down here, but he needs to be very careful until he has his tranquils. And Funic is controlling him very well. Enchantress is of course missing, so I think Trixie concerned about that. Now he is going to be confirming. That Enchantress is indeed inside the Radiant Jungle at this point, and they're just, they're playing it slow and steady, but when you look at lineup like Navi's that are really looking to create chaos in the early game, I feel like they haven't really managed yet. No, certainly not. Pretty much this has become Navi's jungle now, so we'll see. Uh-oh, oh, Shadow Demon might be a little too far out, but lucky, lucky enough for him, it's an Indus rune. Attacked. Could have been a lot of trouble as Dendi was looking to sweep on through as well, but because of it, he's going to get denied that rune. Top lane, a little bit of harassment here. Navi, can they get on the bad end of this Matamba Man PL? No, he's going to be able to step back here. Went with the early power treads. Is this the kind of a game, Cinderin, where you want to be going rush right for the Diffusal Blade on your PL? so you could take advantage of, you know, getting on top of someone like the Pudge so he can't really achieve a whole lot? Or do you kind of step off, make sure you get a bit more durability? We've seen other PLs pick up, you know, maybe a Drums first, maybe a good old reliable Yasha. Anything in particular standing out to you as far as where this PL needs to go in this Radiant particular game? I think Manta fire. first is really good in this game. So he can, he can Manta out of the Night Stalker Silence. He can just farm more effectively and and split push a lot better, which is something Navi would like to not happen. They have split push themselves with the Brood, but the, their other heroes apart from Gyro really don't deal well with the PL illusions. So if he can get up to that, start farming their jungle and especially push their lane, that would be great. Um, I think if they feel forced to fight, you should get the defusal. But if they can get away with it, like if the game stays in this pace, probably the Manta is fine. It's oh, Nico, he went in way too far. They wanted to make a committed dive. They thought they were going to get something after that blast. But unfortunately, they're only welcome with the call down from Havost. And with that, he's ended up, well, 
It's a good grab for them. They push ahead now three to one. We see that Shadow Fiend's pretty much getting the most out of all three lanes. He'll grab up his power treads here. Yet to see Denny be able to get something. He's swinging around for him. Will he get the grab? He will! Right behind. Looks like the hitbox is a bit big, but now he's going to follow up with the dismember. Will he be able to finish him off? It's going to be easy peasy. Didn't even need Sonico to really help out in there, but hey, I think you did. Sonico and some XP. Oh, you did. Okay, well, hold on. Now they move on in. Oh, good silence. Oh, he can't get away. Hook not going to be catching here. Blast will be able to hit him on the back inside. Will they finish him off? Battle Hunger will. And they're going to get that kill. Yeah, so if, if the if the Night Stalker doesn't port and void there, I think Shadow Demon catches up and actually disrupts Dendi. So they did need him, but unfortunately for them, Sonico, once again, over-aggressive a little bit. He, he made the mistake in the top lane before. He's making the mistake in the mid lane this time, as we do get to see the replay here. And the stat, by the way, that we didn't talk about. Dendi, 26 and 9 on punch. Attacked. Ridiculous win rate. That's actually insane. Yeah. So we're going to see here. He's going to dismember an MV. Okay, never mind. All right, production. <laughs> Adam could have been breaking time. out, so yeah, <laughs> fault. But I also did notice you were right. The Shadow Demon was right there, almost as the safety net for Shadow Fiend in case something like that happens. But it was a very long pull Radiant because that Night Stark was able attacked. to rotate in. They get to finishing blow, Radiant but Dendi now fortified. smoked up on the prowl. Oh, he's going to run right into Boogie here, but there is a quick disruption. Phonix right there, but he's going to be able to make it back to safety. Will the hook be there? Oh, oh not cool. just behind. Dendi not going to be able to catch that one. Very close. Phonix claims the bottom tower while having his hero elsewhere. Pretty much next. Next to Dendi here in the jungle. So the Spidalings. Oh man. Taking care of that. Funic will be getting a very. Well, not a very fast time, but a fast time. But look at it as well as taking tons of damage here. I don't know if they can chase him down though. Yeah, nice good Centaur Slash. Four Anchor is really doing good work here in the top lane, but yeah, on the other side, Funic is almost doing as he pleases as this Broodmother has just kind of claimed this whole jungle. Dyer's this is my nest now. Taking Except damage. that. And well, with that tower down on the bottom, it removes that access point from Four Anchors here. So if Trixie is caught out too far forward, he really is not going to be able to get Dyer's much help here. And it looks like Dandy looking to come on in. He gets the Vicky Good Dismember, but no, he anticipates that he's going to be up to the north, goes for the blind hook, but is not going to be able to get anything there. So, Dyer's middle tower well, lucky there for Trixie damage. to make that then he didn't happen to go south instead. How many smokes have Navi used? They've used all three? Oh boy, that's that's pretty bad news, honestly. Dyer's I don't know, What's the, is there one on the, No. They're out of smokes for a good three minutes, and then they'll have one, and then they need to wait another 12. So they've used three smokes, they found two kills. And this is a big part of Dendi's success on Pudge in general, is that he really puts smokes to good use. Mm -hmm. Not the case this game. No, definitely not. Funny creeping on in. They're looking to play very aggressive with the lineup they got here. And now, look at this. Charging up forward. Dendi runs right in. Gets the easy bite. Gets the kill. It's actually going to be Funny who picks up the last hit on that one. And he's going to take this momentum right towards the mid lane. Knowing he has the haste. Ooh! That hook, again, coming up just a little bit short. That was very close on the hook. That was like 100 range, I think. Would not have had the bite as a follow-up, but, you know, with the rot and, of course, the haste. Yeah, you would have definitely killed the Shadow Demon there. Without a I don't doubt. Think it was a counterplay. Well, what's happening? You know, I'm hearing a call down. Oh, it's yeah. just a jungle, right? Yeah, so he's going to clear out some stacks here. Lost. What's his item build going to be? He has Phase and Bracer. So, looking for a drum. And the Midas now comes out for Funic. In some early stackage, you see the. Yeah, Midas now done here. Is this going to be one of those kind of necrobook games? Getting up an early orchid could be a bit devastating to the PL, unless, you know, PL does manage to throw together that Manta, but can be very nicely utilized. Someone like Howard will need to watch out. Already he's trying to keep his weight away, but look at this. He was able to get the snag, it looks like, and they take Trixie down again. This axe is being punished over and over again. His jungle had been taken away. He had to rotate lanes. This seems to be quite the struggle for Trixie. Yeah, they're really shutting down that jungle nicely. The question is if 4ASC should be trying to contest it and get it back, or if Trixie should just play in the enemy jungle. He's willingly going into his own jungle all the time when it's under control, and that obviously means, well, if the Pudge and the Brood are hanging out down there, he could probably look to farm the camps in the top, and maybe he will now that this tier 1 is gone, and it opens has up an access though. path. Chantress continues to kind of hang around that Navi jungle, so... If she can't really kill an X, though... I know, but, but yeah, if there's a rotation... They would be able to scout him out and know exactly what's going on, and one quick rotation, or a running in Pudge. Oh, Sunico. Natural Nighttime kicks in. Radiant's yeah. bottom tower is being attacked. Feels like Navi have good momentum this game, even though the Dyer's kill score is only 4-4. Four four, but at the same moment, PL finding a lot of for himself. Back up bottom lane, this game is called on Trixie. Able to sidestep it here, but he finally has to take a Big rocket barrage does some serious work, but he is able to get off the call. So getting that extra bit of an armor boost helps out. Looks like the rotation TP will be canceled, as they deem it not 
worthy here. But here comes Dendi creeping on in. Suddenly, a boogie appears. Oh, they, they drop a ward, but immediately a sentry thereafter. And now it's Dendi who might be in trouble. PL trying to block him. Maybe out on the front. Gets the block. Tries to go instead for the TP, but it's going to get canceled from the destruction. Look at them time out the blast as the follow up, and they'll get the kill. Dendi, being a bit too adventurous there, runs into trouble and will go. I think that is the fastest counter ward in history. <laughs> he actually, he, he had no idea. He didn't even see Dendi yet when he planted it. They just planted them simultaneously, and that's, that really sucks for Dendi. He had a killing spree that goes the way of the Caudal. He gets counter warded immediately, and of course, Dendi would love to play this nighttime with Vision. It's, it's when he has the most ganking potential. <laughs> Let's see out. how fast it was. Warding replay. That game set. Burn. Bang. <laughs> 50 gold. Easy. <laughs> I mean, oh wait! It, it was just, a, oh, it was a great block though too as well. This is a very good, right very good double ganger him. play by Matumba. Yep, and it, an adventurous kind of a TP, but obviously going to be canceled disruption. So Nico knows there's nothing he can really do about it. They have four participating for that kill too. So a lot of attention towards that top lane. And look at this after fun, it claims that tier one bottom lane, and you know a good portion of the jungle. He's actually going to take himself to the top lane now. So Nabi moving around quite a bit. I imagine Dendi's still going to continue to try to be all over the place, create that bit of space, so it's going to be a little bit of a spot, but we'll see here. Looks like they want to press down this mid lane and go for the tier one. Yeah, pushing into comp champ even is a nightmare, though. This is yeah. so good wave clear. This is just not going to happen. And they will give up on it. At least they force a little bit of a rotation from the supports to stand defensively, and of course, Phonic is just free farming top meanwhile, but kind of so is Shadowfiend. So I want to say even all in all, now, the question is, so PL went for a Morbid Mask. I'm not sure what the build-up is from Matumba, if he wants to go for the Mask of Madness this game, or of Lads, or neither, just wants to have Morbid Mask. It does, of course, help his farming speed quite a bit going for the Madness. I think Yasha is just as good on PL, if not better, though, just because of the strength of your illusions you actually get when you carry that around. That's what or I is, heard. Is Dur there Helm Dur of the Dominator build up that makes Not any that sense? Not that I know I of. Think so. When I heard from... Honey thinks it's Vlad's. Thinks it's Vlad's. Oh, yeah, that is true. AoE armor against Gyro is good. It allows him to farm the jungle without taking damage. But kind of... It, PL doesn't really need that yeah. since illusions can just tank. But. I hmm. believe it was a certain Banana Slam jam I know during the Red Bull Battlegrounds that when he plays PL, which he does like to play frequently, has Dyer's occasually from time to time gone for Mask attacked. of Madness. Not his most optimal build, but he feels like it is a, a farming accelerator. But I'm with you. I feel like a blast can benefit a lot, but here we go. They're going to look to move this. They're going to be the timing up with the Requiem. Then he's in a bit of trouble trying to go yet again on another punch adventure, but he's going to be coming up short instead of handing over a kill. This time it's going to be through the Shadow Bane top lane, though. At that same moment, they're going to go into the Tumble Man. They're going to be able to bring him down, but here comes Trixie. He gets up a nice call into two, but they're not going to be able to vision it off, it looks like. They're going to charge on four. They got the poison. They got the battle hunger. Is it enough to wither down the Sonika. Well, meanwhile, you're going to see Funnick zoning back the Shadow Demon here. Trixie looking to finish what he started. It looks like he is going to be able to get it, but look at that. Oh, Boogie so close to going down. And the blast, they, oh, they get him right on the back end of it. Oh, Blinding Light trying to get him back and closer to the laning setup, but Funnick will withstand. Ends up being a two-for-one trade, but four anchors do lose their PL. That's a key kill. Mm -hmm. And Broodmother getting it isn't bad either. That just means Funic will take over the CS or the net worth lead, I believe. Yes, he is 600 ahead of the Shadow Fiend. Of course, the Midas build up helping him out quite a bit. And Brood is a hero that kind of needs to play from ahead in order to, at least if you want to play it carry style. I guess we'll get a, a hint as to whether that's Funic's plan soon. If he's playing fighting style, the problem is he's a melee core. And playing melee cores against Shadow Demon Axe sucks. There's Call, there's Demonic Purge, and you really don't get to do much. So I actually think, well, it looks like it is going to be a BKB. I'm not sure that's the best build here, to be honest, because as mentioned, they're just going to be able to control it nicely. I would have loved to see a book. As you mentioned, I think that would have been a great pickup. Uh, just play more of a split push and uh, aggressive role in that sense. But uh, looks like it's more of a fighting spike. Good Centaur Stomp from Art Style. Oh. Well, Dendi could try for this hook on Volix, but I think they're scared of the follow-up as oh. Ross doesn't care. Ouch. Thank you, Rocket Barrage. The call is going to be there. Oh, the snag is going to be catching on to Trixie, a big meaty target, but because of the isolation, they do quickly bring him down. Now it's Navi charging on Ford, looking here if they can give him a Tumba Man. They're dropping down the sentries to see if they can finish him off. He gets a good distance doppelganger to step away from the harassment, and it looks like they're going to get close enough to the tower that Navi are going to second get him. Well, we're committing, but what a beautiful hook from the north side. They're going to
to get the grab and then be in big trouble here. And he is going to end up going down. Good snag from Funnick, catching him out with that nuke. Ends up being a two-man drop. Navi lose no one for this. And this is exactly what they needed. Seemed a bit wishy-washy for Navi up to that point. We saw two, three different times where Dending was trying to kind of dive on forward, looking for his own bit of a pick. Ended up getting taken down himself. But this time, it turns out very well. Radiant's bottom tower under fire. Yeah, they... This is the opening, so we see the call down here from Hvost, not really catching that much. This hook is what's important. Trixie walking in and taking that, I don't think that was the intention. No. Ideally, if you get anyone hooked, it's the, it's the PL. Or you just let PL just look at the hook, and then you, um, you doppelganger right when it's about to hit you. But yeah. instead, losing X right at the start of the fight gives Navi a big advantage. Great Illuminate here is not going to be enough. And Navi, the hook from Dendi from above here, they had a lot of moved up here. It using was... the homing missile set up very nicely. Exactly. Though. That was just almost too convenient right there. Because of it. And he thinks he's almost going to get away, but that was one of the longest range looking Broodmother nukes I've ever seen. And because of it, they get that pressure shadow down. So a big grab for them. You now see both Quanic and Havos taking over the top of the net worth here. And it's just looking like a really good pace for them. And I imagine it's getting pretty dang close to that nighttime here. We'll see if they're going to decide to get pretty dang aggressive. We look over to Trixie. He decided to go with that Vanguard first. Trying to go together. He's getting pretty close to his Blink Dagger here. Oh! Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Can't you imagine being in his position? You see that coming your way. And it's like, please, please, no! And he's able to make it out. If he was to go down there, it would have put him off even longer from that Blink Dagger. And oh! What was that? Just intuition just happens to backstep it away from the hook. Oh, very unfortunate for Denny to not catch that one. And that was a smoke. So that's Navi's last smoke for the next six minutes. I want to mention that Hvost didn't finish the drum, by the way. He went to Bracer and now going into Sanj and Yasha for his mid up here. Should be able to finish it off about minute 20, which is a decent timing for an SNY. Not the best, not the worst. It's just uh, pretty good. And what else are we looking at for Navi? The Pudge, 2.1k gold on Dendi. I think he... I. I I guess it's blink. blink. I mean, if he was contemplating whether it's blink or force, you generally make your decision when you're like, okay, now I have a thousand gold. If I want my force, I start buying it up just to not lose gold in case I die. And yeah, that is definitely going to help them a lot. It's going to make oh, yeah. it way easier for him to catch, especially the axe, who seems to have been the priority target so far. And even especially when X gets the blink, if you can get the jump, you secure that there's no counter initiate to your team fight when you engage. Yeah, whether it's a blinking quick rot to prevent something like a blink coming up from the axe, just an instant dismember to guarantee the lockdown, or of course, increasing that precious range of the hook. It's all wonderful. So notice that the Coddle, no early investment into the mana leak whatsoever, went with the 404 build up. He is getting pretty dang close though to an active scepter. Going a bit greedy in this game, but I guess it's not too hard to, to farm up on a Coddle as long as you find that opportunity to get that kind of a farm. But really, how effective is the Coddle Agnum's gonna be in this game with that darkness coming out? from the Night Stalker. Dyer's Night Stalker nowhere near his Agnes. Denied. I don't even think he's gotten one component towards it yet. No, he went for the Midas. So, Sonico is looking to get an impact in the mid-late game. I think it's the right choice as well. With how the early game went, he needs a, a way to become relevant later on. Especially considering both Enchantress and Pudge generally fall off. Of course, Enchantress, now that Enchantress does hit the BKB, can be more relevant, but it's still... It's still not the best melee gamer as a support. And you even have a punch as a core role, so it doesn't scale that well. So now we need to compensate. They are going to get Roshan here by the looks of it, so that's definitely going to help them quite a bit. Maybe look to siege a tower with this Aegis. They've only claimed one tower in a 21 with an Enchantress Brood lineup. That's, that's a rare sight. Yeah. As far as he got two. One thing I was going to ask is just based on the, the, the lineups on paper here, is it more for Navi to try to get a lot done and kind of get this game to a close earlier? When you look over at more acres, they got both the benefit of a PL plus the Shadow Fiend. I feel like they could be a big problem into the later portion of this game. So just based on the aggression that's been coming out from Navi, is it that kind of pressure because they don't want to risk taking this game too long? They have yet to kind of take as many objectives as you would suspect, like you were saying. I don't know, actually. I, I, I feel like if they just flat out play for late game with these Midas's, they're probably just going to get overpowered in the late game. Axe is such a good late gamer, like you said, both Shadow and Peel. Sure, they're behind the Brood and Gyro and Farm, but I feel like just Brood, even if Brood is ahead by, let's say most heroes are 20k net worth in the game and Brood is 25, it still doesn't seem to have the same impact uh, as other cores, so... Game plan wise, I think for ASC are happy with how it's going now. And let's not forget the wild card, Keeper of the Light. Late game, Blinding Light is yeah. an absolute godlike ability with very low cooldown. And of course, the miss chance is absolutely huge. He's gonna have oh, got it. He's gonna get absolutely eaten by Dendi. Yes. Yeah. 
Got don't. the mono leak off though. This should be a stun. They might be able to get it. Oh, they perched the Night Stalker instead, and Punnet comes in. Uh, there he goes, the big golden spider looking to charge down and chop away at Trixie here. Obviously, no kill opportunity going to be there. Oh, they try to dish out the dust, but it looks like it is going to be coming up a bit short. Funnick's going to make his way over the mountain and out from trouble. But, yeah, I have to agree because the other thing that could be very nice for four anchors is even if they do, you know, start losing their towers, they're restricted inside their base, I feel like they have pretty solid high ground defense and Navi maybe not so good sieging capability to go up into the high ground. You're going into a combo blast. You risk getting jumped on from the axe in the back lines with Spinal Claw. Oh, nice setup. Lincoln Hook. They're going to get the quick snack on the Shadow Demon here, so making a bit of damage with Trixie. Jumping in from behind. Behind here, but he's eating a wealth of damage coming out from the post. He's gonna go down tight Requiem though on the return. Can they follow it up? Big blast from Connell. They're gonna get Hippos down, but that's just his Aegis. Now four Angers need to disperse. Or do they? Matumbo Man comes on forward, dishes out the Spirit Lance. Blinding Light actually pushes him a little further away. Tried to step in for a mana leak, get out suppose, of here. but yeah, get the hell off my lawn. And it will step them back, but. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, I feel, to kind of break the tough shell of the four anchors baseline. So not only the count of making sure they either get picks, if Dendi has to go fishing, they kind of set up one of those picks, and then they can kind of maybe advance on forward with just an advantage in numbers. I definitely agree. The high ground siege is going to be the tricky part for Navi, no matter how this goes in the next five to ten minutes. Uh, even if they try for a 4-1 where Brute pushes one lane and they have four in the other lane, there are multiple heroes that stand well against the Brute Spiderlings. Both the Axe can deal with them, the Shadowfin can deal with them, and the Coddle. So you have multiple ways of moving around and setting up for your fight the way you desire as Trixie bottom lane looking for Brute does not find him. Um, finds a couple of spiderlings, not what he was looking for. Funnick just, you know, hey, watch your step there. They're looking for it, even in a blind grab, but oh, Dendi, they get the jump in, guaranteed by it. going to be there, Paul, the but the mech was there from the Shadow Fiend. Now they're going to dish out the Razor, so they're going to be able to bring down Dendi. They will. The disruption to fly out of self-disruption. Can they still fish him off? They can, but it's still a better trade for four anchors. It would be so much better if they could get this pesky, funnic broodmother. Can they grab it? They certainly can. Coddle got the kill. That's Ags. Yeah, it is an Ags, and I can tell you firsthand, when you get an Ags, it's like he becomes a whole new hero at that point. Guaranteed to always have that blinding light up and at the Ready, you get that taxi service, constant recall, so that means if you're trying to make an advancement on forward and you're like, oh, I'm very, you know, low on mana and HP, an easy TP back to the base and bring back into the battlefield guarantees that your cores can farm on those side lanes and they can always be there when a fight does break out. It's a huge grab. And obviously he can safely put out those illuminates without risking his own. You now know, there's fight. actually one thing we haven't talked about in this game. I was about to say this is a really good time to get the X because daytime just started, but guess who's on the other side? Night Stucker. So whenever Navi want to take a team fight, they need to have either natural nighttime or darkness ready. Then Coddle damage. can never benefit from the heal of his Illuminate, which is a huge oh, part yeah. of the Agon Scepter upgrade. It is a 500 heal if it's channeled fully to everyone. It's basically a double mech apart from the armor on a 10 second cooldown, which is absolutely ridiculous, but might not be able to use it in this game, Volix. So perhaps he needs to either, I don't know, do they have a mech on their team? They have it on Shadowfin, obviously, what am I talking about, but yeah. What do you do as, as Keeper of the Light here? You can't rely on the heal. You're probably going to focus a lot more on, you know, you obviously use the Illuminate probably just aggressively in that case. Instead of focusing on, on the split heal and damage, you just think of it as a damage ability still, and then a lot more emphasis on casting Blinding Light properly, and it's going to be, when it comes up to level 3, his ultimate, that's going to be a 12 second cooldown blinding light. You can cut 4 additional seconds off that with chocolate. Yeah. And then you can almost overlap the blinds. It lasts 6 seconds on an 8 second cooldown in that case. It's an absolutely incredible team fight ability. It really is. And it's something I feel a lot of teams can't underestimate is how effective that blinding light can be. And you're, you know, you're right. Darkness is going to take away his capability to dish out that ridiculous amount of heal. And the map control as well. And the map control, that huge, you know, you know, unobstructed vision he gets, which is so effective when you're working, like, let's say, around the Roche pit and you're trying to get that upper hand advantage. Luckily, though, it doesn't, you know, just remove his spirit form. He still has access to that blinding light, to that kind of recall capability. So you still get a lot out of it, but yeah, certainly as the game goes on, <laughs> he is not going to be able to get the full benefit of that Agnum. So we'll have to see where he decides to build on top of that from here on out. Funnick will be buying a Maelstrom. I have this feeling that he does really not want to buy this item, but they need a solution to PL in addition to Gyro. We're going to reach a position in this game where if Gyro gets jumped on in a team fight, they Navi actually have a 0% chance of winning a team fight if they don't have anything else against him. But Funnick might live here. 
He's getting locked in place, Just kidding. though. Yeah. Oh, not a heal up. Okay. No. That took a lot more sweat than oh, anticipated. Oh, But yeah, good snag there from Denny. Gets the pullback on the tricks if they're going to be able to finish him off. But now that everything has been expended for that fun to kill, it's going to be Navi who press on forward and take advantage of what four anchors don't have for the second winded fight. And because of it, they're going to get the snag. And that means it's a two for one trade. They do lose their brood, but they get Trixie down in exchange with an additional little support. <laughs> Good grab. Mm -hmm. Well, Matumba is split pushing top, and we're of course going to start seeing 4ASC making more use of recall and just trying to move this PL around the map and be super annoying. He's keeping the mortar map as just attacked. a reliable bit of leech, and now he's stepping forward for the ulti orb. So Scotty, I imagine, is going to be the stats. Do think Scotty? I think Manta is still worth it, honestly. I still think that's the best choice. We've I've seen other PLs go for just defusal into Scotty. It just I've, there's too much merit for me in, in Mantis down this year, and I, I generally find myself disagreeing with players that don't get it at all in PL or don't get it as like the first or second core, and it is just absolutely incredible with his kit. So maybe he just needs the extra bit of life and holds yes. the reliable ulti orb instead of just stepping up first for the Yasha instead. I think so. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. We'll but we'll see. see soon, yeah. Yeah, the Manta, as you were talking about before, does benefit a lot in this kind of game when you got that Night Stalker Silence coming out it, it, and all the slows they already dish on that kind of a team. Could help mitigate the rocket barrage damage. There's a lot of little things there. So yeah, the alternative way of looking at it is, well, what's my what's my biggest opponent? Gyro. How do I counter Gyro? I get armor and health, and then Scotty is a better choice than the Manta, which is good for split pushing, as we talked about, and for disjoining, but not doesn't really give you much bang for your buck as far as tankiness goes. So if he is strictly looking to counter Gyro, I think Scotty is the best item. But there are other enemies in the game than just him. Is there? Um, yeah, of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, the Agnum stick now coming out for Night Stalker, and this is, you know, Dial's obviously going to be Connor's worst nightmare. And do remember, if I do remember correctly, and it could have been Four Acres, I believe there was a game where they ran a Coddle against the Night Stalker and it didn't turn out too well. Now, not to say that was the lone factor, but we'll have to see if we're going to get a bit of a repeat of past history here. But I feel like this PL continues to get a lot of farm across the map. But I say that and I look at the actual network chart, and maybe it's the fact that he isn't able to participate in as many kills as someone like Havos has been able to, but he's still falling behind as far as the other cores on the other side are, so. Yeah, Navi just seemed to be getting more gold per minute. There's yeah. got to be an MKB coming out on first right now. They're 10,000 experience ahead as well, and I want to say a really big part of it is just even even though they're not there, just the threat is really giving them an advantage. Just the map control they have innately from having Brute and Pudge makes it very difficult for the Radiant side to move out on the map and claim the farm they want. And speaking of map control, they're looking to get a free Roshan as well. It's, looks like 4ASC have no interest in even trying to go look there right now. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they do. Trixie? No, that's not the card he's taking. They're recalling the PL, I think. Nope. Who did they recall? Looks like maybe Shadow No. Yeah, Shadow Kingdom got brought in, but immediately brought back. They're going to still get that Aegis nonetheless. The gem now going to be picked up from the Nice Stalker, so he's going to be more with that. Oh, nice body block here from Artstyle with the creep. Does we have the blinding light to kind of get the hell out of the way so he can walk on out. Navi looking to sweep on through here, but they need this. They're going to be able, they need this kind of huge economy boost on their side, especially if they have to break through that high ground defense that we were already talking about before, but still even a tier one mid lane for them to take, so clearly still even more gold out there for them to kind of snag up. Yeah, close to be claiming it. He's got to put Glyph off cooldown again, so pushing the tier two should become pretty difficult. Keeper of the Light with, of course, the Illuminate and Shadow Poison, and you need to remember all, while all this is happening, Matumba is farming. So the reason Navi have been gaining is that they've just been split pushing and split farming Radiant's as well as getting objectives. Now they're starting to commit their heroes into one spot. And that's where Radiant's economy becomes crucial. We're going to see the cliff used. Illuminate. Clipping, but not hitting all of the creeps. And now Dendi is oh. caught on to the oh. map. Oh, he's going to hook a ball. They actually disrupt him on the way back. Oh, he knocks nice him to the long ground with a blinding light. So this fight could be split right down the middle. Both Sonico and Dendi come on the low ground here, but the high ground allows them to kind of finish up what they started on the coddle. And it looks like Four Acres are not going to be able to do Dyer's anything with what's been buffed to the low to ground. So with that, Navi should be able to swoop on forward. If they get this tower, that's two towers back to back, plus Dyer's the coddle takedown. This is just so much money coming their way, going in their pockets, and this is going to be a very difficult time for four anchors. If they're going to be shoveled back into their base, it, they're going to be very scared as far as moving out there and finding farm on anyone outside of this PL, and they're just going to be in the dark because of this Night Stalker.
Yeah, Navi don't look to go back here. They have darkness when night when daytime kicks in kicks in in about five or six seconds here. So Nicole just using that blink in from Trixie and a call. Close has the ages, however. Seeing a lot of damage from the tower and everything. It's the darkness. And they might just pull back here. They got the tower they came for, they got a bonus kill. They did also lose their top tier too, however, to uh, PL split push was claimed by the Radiant. That was a quick disruption reaction right has there. the Manta. Yeah, if he would have timed it a little bit better, the hook wouldn't even have happened, but... Unfortunately, it did because of it. Both. It's difficult. Yeah. The Enchantress and your Gyrocopter easily get a hold of this little coddle, and they can't do anything about Denny and Sonico on the low ground. So they're able to kind of get the kill, follow it up, get the Tier 2, try to poke a bit into the base of four anchors here. So it looks like it's going to be a, a rough time for four anchors here unless they can get this PL. I mean, how much pressure do you feel like this PL, like the weight on his back to try to pull this one on forward? You still also, of course, have the Shadow Fiend, but not very much as far as the damage goes. I mean, he went with the Blink, the Mech, the BKB, very defensive kind of build up with a little bit of mobility, but the right click, he's only, you know, hoping for just the Necromastery. How much weight is on PL's shoulders? Quite a lot right now, to be honest. Uh, he did go for the Manta build into Diffusal too, so he's definitely, as far as fighting potential goes, if the Flak Cannon is down, he can deal. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely be able to, like, I still feel like the gold is a little bit deceptive when it comes to an actual team fight where even the 10k deficit and 12k deficit on XP all comes down to whether Hvost gets to play his hero well in the fight, gets to get maximum impact out of the Flak Cannon. Um, and as you mentioned, Shadowfiend, not really the farmiest or the most dangerous of build, rather, for Navi to deal with, with uh, as far as damage goes, but that is definitely where he's headed next. I think we're gonna see probably a Daedalus out of Nemphi, or maybe a Butterfly, although there is already a, that MKB out on Gyro, so probably, yeah, I, I don't know if Butterfly is worth it this game. MKB is such a good item against the Radiant lineup. Two bu natural Butterfly carriers and Shadow Fiend and, and PL, and of course the Blinding Light. Yep. And Ca Gyro doesn't care. PL gonna get spotted. Two armies against each other. One of them is just waiting. It does feel like coming into this draft, you know, Dyer's Navi were prepared. They expected if something like four anchors were going to go for something they'd gone for multiple times in the opening of a Coddle PL. It wasn't that much hesitation to follow up with the Night Stalker, and they just anticipated what was to come. And grabbing and itemizing appropriately, like you already talked about, getting something like your MKB renders a lot of the potential for four anchors. I don't want to say useless, but it just, it's going to seem like their options become a lot more limited. Phonic did finish out that Mjolnir build up here on your Broodmother. Radiant's top Don't tower a whole lot is often, but to help obviously with his own bit of pushing capability. This is just going to be very, very interesting. Navi have not even taken this top tier one Radiant's yet. They're going to be able to grab it. And it looks like they'll just continue to kind of take more map dominance while Radiant they can. Has lost their top tower. And it looks like Dendi. He got the Yules, by the way, and it, obviously for people who didn't already know, get the setup with the Yules, still means you can hook them out with the Slavery Yules. One of the very few abilities that interacts with it. Phonic is going to try to man fight Matum, but he's going to regret it very quickly. Oh, not quick enough, though. So PL is damn deceptive in that way. All right, that that was not the play for Phonic. Now Navi might Radio's actually be a little bit hesitant top, top because, well, what if they just recall the PL up there and try to take the fight? I think they could have gone away with this tower, tower just look at how scared for a CR, but Radiant's no one's going to get anything apart from the PL getting attacked. a pretty big kill. That's actually worth a lot of gold when they're behind like this, and that going onto the PL is definitely a problem Dyer's for Navi. How much does it say? 900 kill gold for that. Does Phonic have a streak, or is that just... I think the, what it shows in chat is the actual gain, right? Mm -hmm. So he gained 900 and Phonic lost. Let's just see how fast the spider went down. Tried to man fight here, even with Mjolnir on himself. Does it, I mean, yeah, it will trigger a lot with all these illusions swarming in, but clearly not enough. It was just so much going on. You could even see Phonic amongst the mist of death right there. And I don't think he's going to look to make that kind of mistake twice. you got to make sure you are well prepared. You were talking about it before with the Manta and into the Diffusal. He can dish out a big punch. Those are just illusions right there, and they got a good quarter of the life off of even the Hobos Gyrocopter. Gonna recall the PL. Homing Missile is still gonna follow him, so Quos will gain a little more intel here. We're gonna see Boogie, I think, as he is gonna disjoint that with Doppelganger. Good snag. 
Now, what about the effectiveness of Dendi as the game does go later? Does it get to a point where he's pretty much just the one to try to get the fight set up? If he's able to get that one quick pick, his lockdown factor is respectable, but if he's in the middle of a fight trying to dish out, you know, his dismember on locking someone down, if it's not the PL, then he risks putting himself out there to the point where he will be badly beaten. Or is it more of when they're able to get to the base of four anchors, you just look for him to try to be the fisherman? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. He's he's going to be the fisherman, and he's going to be an aura carrier. After this BKB, it looks like he's building just so he has some sort of sustainability in the fights against the PL Shadow Fiend, and of course, of all of the magical damage really that comes out of 4 SC. I'm imagining something like a Vlad's AC build could be great on the Pudge. Going late game, I like to talk Radiant about it. Having AOE armor is really a almost an integral part of every single late game lineup that you can get into. Then he seems like a natural character. Because what else would you get on the push? You can get an Axe, and it's great if you get to dismember a key target. But against PL, it's not really realistic. It could be nice against Axe, to be fair. If he manages to fish out the Axe and eat him, that's huge. Uh, that is kind of situational, but could work. Or maybe something like a Hex, just so he's a utility for his team as well. Wow. What about even adding more into the aura part of that aspect? There are Shivas, if he's able to get yep, maybe AC, too. let's say. Shivas could be good as well. It would Definitely. not be too bad. Great against PL. Yeah. AoE slow from the uh, just the passive part slowing attack speed. Yeah, it works good. PL and anyway, Shadow Fiend there. So with that, Shadow Fiend, he's starting to inch towards that damage department. Gets that Yasha as we see. But gonna need a whole lot more on top of that. Four staff on Caudal. Way of dealing with the hook. Good and for burning more mana, let's say. Get on yep. that mana leak. You blinding light and four staff, and they probably lost a huge chunk of that precious blue bar. Satanic. Now he's definitely sustainable in these fights. Gives a lot of health and, of course, the ability to trigger that. What is it called? Is it Unholy Rage? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I ever heard anyone call it by the way. The Unholy Rage was used! It's a nice name. It sounds like it's pretty bad. This is the third Roshan of Rope for We talked about it pregame. Do they like Dire for Roshan? They seem to not pick lineups that are very good at taking Roshan. This one isn't particularly great either. Mm -hmm. Untouchable is great for tanking him, but damage-wise, not amazing. Still pretty good. And Well, they have got the map control the whole game, so we'll be grabbing it again. The Cheese this time going on to... Da -da -da -da. Brood? Yeah, and Aegis on Gyro. Pudge is a good cheese carrier, though. I wouldn't mind seeing Dendi getting it over Funic, since he can really benefit a lot from the heal. Is it in the aspect that he can kind of jump it, throw in himself out there, get off a big bite? He only get a bit of damage, but he's able to step away. He could just kind of eat the cheese and re-engage. He just has a very high health pool, so he can get the full effect out of the 2500 healing, but Funic actually has a lot of health, too. He has more than I thought he did. 1900 sitting on the Broodmother, so he's a good choice as well. It's solid. Let's... It's time for Navi to go for the push. We'll see. We were we almost got the tower. About. Yeah. Is the high ground defense strong enough here with the Shadow Demon? Kadima dishing out maybe the poison, the Illuminates, as we already saw, flying on out. We'll see if Navi are going to be able to kind of crack the Four Anchors code here and make their way into the base. It's going to uh, be no pipe on Navi. No. Very good item against the call when it comes to sieging. Maybe Dendi should have considered that over Yules, actually. Yeah. There's the darkness right as daytime does come out, and because of that, they'll get that unobstructed yeah. vision. They will be able to easily get the intel seeing over the base wall what four anchors are exactly doing. But they're corralled like sheep at this point, and it's not going to be easy for them to come out. We'll have to see. If Navi do overextend, it could be one step stone for four anchors to try to run themselves right back into this game. There we go. There's the jump. They're going to be able to get the tier 3. Gets the call and force back so he can try to draw the bows deeper inside the base if possible. He gets mana leak, so as he does run out, he loses all that precious mana and he's going to get finished off. So the Aegis is just going to be down. Now the Yules. Oh! They catch Trixie. Maybe even bodyguarding that hook right there. He is going to be caught with this member. The consumption does come out. Big Red him to fly, but he's not taking so down, much damage. Oh, he is very low, but he is on the retreat to step away. They're going to end up bringing down the Enchantress. Looks like Dendi could be going down next. This is Batumba Man's time. He charges up Morgan to finish up. They can get Dendi before he's keeping away. Make it a double kill as they get Funic. And now they're going to grab Soniko. This is the defense that four anchors asked for. What happened with Havos there at the end? He was eating so much of the damage. He was walking on out. His Obviously, his Aegis was brought down there with the jump and raise plus the Illuminate, but I wasn't expecting him to eat, just get so much 
he was punished. Now, th that was the flat cannon timing window. I think he he had used his flat cannon already. It was on cooldown, and there were three or four PL illusions running him down, and no one from that could help him. That's the problem that I talked about earlier. Where, well, when flat cannon is down, if PL manages to stay Dyer's healthy throughout all of that and just damage. get one double ganger off Dyer and just send those illusions or even the manta illusions onto the boss, he is gonna have a problem. And he really tanked a hell of a lot there. And that's a big hold for four anchors. They get what looks to be six or seven thousand experience and a couple thousand gold with this tier two as well as the split push top from Matumba. Man. He's gonna get another big item for the next fight probably. He... I mean, Havos, it was pretty much like a Spirit Lance and just some harassment from Matumba that brought him so low. I love the blink block of the hook coming out from Trixie and because he got the disruption save, the dismember didn't even do a whole lot. So at that point, after Pudge commits out his hook and his dismember, he doesn't really offer a whole lot except walking around and, well, farting all over the places with his rot. <laughs> so it's kind of easy to just take advantage of him at that point. And yeah, maybe between the flat cannon timing and Phonic not being able to utilize a whole lot, it got a bit flustered for him. Havos was forced to retreat as he was just already so badly beaten and that turned out very, very nice for four anchors. Havos, speaking of him, he grabs his next item, the Satanic. Now, what's scary about playing against illusion-based carries with Satanic is that you can't lifesteal off of illusions. Mm -hmm. So, if he pops Satanic and he doesn't find the right target when he does that, it's actually going to be useless. So, he needs to be very careful either knowing where the right PL is and knowing that he doesn't have doppelganger ready, because then he basically wastes the duration of the Unholy Rage, or simply just having another target to hit. And it is a great, and it is a core item on Gyro in general, but he, he needs it. He really does need it, but it's difficult to play. Oh, I like also that. can't leech off the Manta Elusive Shadow Fiend either. So he can if he gets confused in the fight, that item's not gonna be worth so much. See? Oh, art Jump style? Man. That is not a raise. That's not a raise. Oh, so he ends up getting a little bit of venison with that one. Uh oh, call that come out. Uh oh, Hobos, that wasn't your time to fight! And it, the hook is just the carcass of the body of a, Oh no, with that they're gonna lose two. And with tier two dropping four anchors. Seems like this is their time. Cinderin has to buy back. They they can triple Rex in 80 seconds. There's the buy buyback from the gyro, and I think we saw it there. He used Satanic. He couldn't find the right target. He healed nothing that whole fight. I'm pretty sure. That's why they're going to be able to get that deep ward. Maybe a bit ambitious for putting down the hobby so early, hoping that they could guarantee at least the tier three drop. But that's not the case. Dendi able to finish out the BKB. He'd been working on that for quite a while. Finally able to grab it. And it does cost their buyback, their precious gyrocopter. Four anchors step back from that moment. And this is the part of the game where we might be able to see a lot of tension around the Roche pit. It's probably going to be coming up here soon. Both sides would really love to get it, especially now. I have a feeling Freya C wants to fight for it this time. Yeah. I think now they've got enough of a grip on the game and they've got enough farm on especially the PL to actually be able to just fight Navi around the pit area. Um, I also want to point out how as you call the taxi service, how useful it is, just being able to, whenever they're pushing, they force the buyback of Gyro, okay. It's not just you back out, you just put, you just teleport one hero top, he starts pushing out the lane, it was Trixie in this case on the axe, they can always just recall him back. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, Navi, seeing a hero defending a lane doesn't give them valuable information at all. Well, it is valuable, but not as valuable as in other games, where it's like, okay, this hero is top, yep. he TP'd up there, now we can move out. You just never have that sense that, that feeling of safety when it comes to late game situations, kind of similar, similar but in, in a way similar, but in a way completely different to what Pudge does, where the game just changes when he's, when Pudge is off the map, you don't know where you can go. When Coddle is in the game, you still can't read the map the same way with players just being on multiple lanes at the same time. Recall has a very low cooldown, by the way. It's only 15 seconds, and it, again, if he chakras before that, it's 11. So they can really just split push to their heart's content for the rest of the game. Yeah, this is going to be definitely a big headache for Na'Vi, and if you look at their lineup, how can they really deal with a lot of split push? Enchantress, it's not going to be easy for, I'd imagine. Obviously, Gyrocopter, it's good. Dendi will try to defuse his own badness to try to just brute force them down a bit. Night Stalker, not the best at being able to farm out huge, huge waves of creeps, and it could prove to be a bit difficult. This could be the big swing for four anchors to just kind of take the map right back and pressure Na'Vi from all fronts. I think they've overcome the hardest part of the game. Yeah. Now, uh, that that one push was the one they needed to beat, and they did. Now, Navi has a 2K gold lead. I still think that push, uh, push <laughs> puts 4ASC in a, at a massive advantage. 
5,000 on the experience is also irrelevant. If you, if you look at the value of the gold as it is distributed, you've got a 12k net worth Pudge, who I personally feel like in most situations is less valuable than mm -hmm. a 12k Coddle. The Shadow Demon being poor doesn't matter, and Chantra's having a net worth of 7.4 is also really pretty irrelevant. And how good is your 20k Brood? I still haven't felt him in the fights. Oh, so Nico. Nico. This could be big. They're going to recall. Oh, if they damage him, though, he's not going to be able to get that recall. Oh. Almost got him. They found Trixie, though. Yeah, he's going to be the one left behind here. And really, this is just going to be a long-winded kill at this point. There's the Yules of BKB coming up from Dendi. They do get the bite, and they'll slowly wither him down. But he's an axe after all, so it's going to take a bit of effort. Finally, they're going to get a bit more help coming out from Enchantress, and certainly the Vos there. So they'll get their kill. Not as precious as being able to grab that PL, but while they're all stuck at that top lane, they're putting their attention towards the Roche pit now. Unfortunately, it's going to be about another minute's time before it is up, but this is something we preemptively were talking about, you know, in the early portion of this game was, you know, was there a time clock on Na'Vi's lineup? If it got to the late game, would four anchors be able to withstand? When they pushed on in, how strong would the high ground defense be for four anchors? And if they were able to hold that high ground defense, is it going to be their game to take back? And that storyline seems to be developing here right before our eyes. So... We'll have to see what the actual conclusion is going to be. More items are coming out, however. Even a butterfly for Phonic on his Broodmaw. Yeah, that's Butterfly City. They got one on PL at the exact same time, actually. Butterfly City. That sounds like a <laughs> wonderful place to go to. <laughs> yeah. They obviously have the MKB on Jyro. They've had it for a while, but it seems like Matumba isn't too concerned about that. Obviously, Butterfly still gives a lot of armor. The attack speed is great. And... Uh, Obviously, agility and damage is always great, but evasion part of it, not so useful against every against the gyrocopter who is his main threat. I still, I think, to an extent, Scotty might have been a better choice still. But honestly, judging from how the fights have been going for Matoma, maybe he doesn't need the evasion. Maybe not. There's a Roche. What's up? Scouted up, obviously, here from Navi. They want it. There's an eco in a very good position come to this area. Yeah. Getting a lot of information with his eggs right now, but they're smoked, so maybe not oh, so much. It's popped. Are they going to go for the quick pick on the Night Stalker? They're going to recall. Oh. And Matomin's here. He's going to... Oh, this is the fight! And they do it. And Leech starts on Marcel, but they're going to charge up forward. They're going to go for the Gyrocopter. A jump in Requiem. Not going to be coming up because Dendi gets it canceled from the dismember. Blast the flying up through. This time the Requiem will go off. It's Gyrocopter goes down first. Then they get the Night Stalker. It's four Akos who are doing it. They're able to quickly wipe out three, and now they're going to be taking the Roche Cinder and it looks like four anchors are going to be able to do it this time. And I don't think there's going to be much to stop him. Oh, he tries to go for a hook, but look who's already there at his back, tapping on his shoulders. It's Trixie with the axe. They're going to get the call up. Dendi's going to go down. It's four down on the side of Na'Vi. Four anchors only lose their Shadow Demon, and now they move on in. There is no buyback for Havos. He still has 85 seconds time. Dendi's out for a minute, no buyback. This is crazy right now. Four anchors are going to be taking this game. Own it. Is they even going to get Arts down the end here? Just chasing him down with Blink Battle Hunger from Trixie. There they go. This has got to be game. 70 seconds on Jaro, 50 on Punch, 60 on Enchantress. They, they will get three lanes here. Absolutely. Bottom tower goes down, mid tower goes down. GG. Wow. Well, wow. Wow. Butterfly Sim. This is just crazy. I mean, it was it was very well played. You could tell that the lineup that Navi got, it just felt like they were anticipating to have a big mid-game performance. Dendi would be doing his Dendi of old punch things, you know, being able to grab continuous kills, relieve the pressure of 